Botswana is full of amazing business opportunities. From a relatively underexplored and underinvested sector a mere decade ago, Botswana's financial and business sector is considered to be one of the continent's brightest prospects. This is due to the fact that the financial sector development has been on the agenda of Botswana's policymakers for some time. As the continued development of this sector has the potential to transform the lives of thousands of Botswana across the country. For instance, access to credit by the SME sector has the ability to provide jobs, create safety networks and ultimately play a role in reducing poverty. For us to grow the market, we need to have more partnerships. We can actually invite investors to come and strengthen our competitiveness by putting more money in the businesses that are local. So what we are looking for now is investors to come and partner with us to grow so that we can be strengthened and be uh, commercially competitive. Once we have investors that have put more capital into the company, strengthen us, we'll find that we'll be able to lower the cost to the client, our client, and make sure that we are fully efficient and we can do more business. With this in mind, Various policy reforms over the past decade have contributed to an environment more conducive to financial sector development and where the government has made progress in introducing much needed regulatory frameworks, information systems and regulatory institutions all aimed at enabling and facilitating further development in this sector. Botswana is quite an interesting country. Um, from, a, from a simple point of view, it's very straightforward. There's no complex structures it's very it's i think it's our banking was supposed to be or used to be in the, in the olden days it's very simple it's very um, uncomplicated so as a result the banking industry is quite healthy you know i think a lot of people's money is, is, is safer here than in many many other countries for example banks are well regulated so you know it's very nice in this environment so your regulator is good your macroeconomics looks good the, the banking is actually doing quite well so Investors have been getting fairly good returns on their money over the, over the years in banking, um, in Botswana specifically. Certified international financial service companies in Botswana enjoy competitive incentives, such as a competitive corporate tax incentive framework, exemptions from capital gains tax and withholding tax, no foreign exchange control, there's no exchange control, it makes it so, e so much easier. As I said, I think people's money is, is, is quite safe in Botswana and people then have the freedom as well to move money. The country is targeting willing investors in international insurance, international business companies, banks, investment funds and business process outsourcing and call centers. Botswana's International Financial Services Center Supporting Regulatory Framework provides regional and international banks, international business firms, insurance companies and investment funds an advantageous platform to penetrate new markets or consolidate their position in sub-Saharan Africa's fast-growing markets. Information and Communication Technologies ICTs, have the potential to transform business and government in Botswana, driving entrepreneurship, innovation and economic growth. Phenomenal growth in Botswana's information and communications technology sector is rapidly changing the country's macroeconomic landscape, with smartphone use already firmly established for individuals and business. The government is embracing wide-ranging ICT developments, increasing internet access and making ICT a crucial plank of their development plans. Currently, Botswana consumers are spending approximately $85 million a year on the ICT sector. The telecommunications industry's outstanding growth is reflected in the rising levels of international investment surging into one of Botswana's most lucrative sectors, with international companies such as Orange and new entrants like MTN and Liquid Telecom expanding their operations within the country. Investment opportunities in ICT exist in e-health, e-banking, broadcast television, e-waste, commerce, software and application development, and ICT in agriculture. With ICT for Botswana is how can ICT be leveraged for development? 
We're seeing branchless banking uh, being promoted through the use of ICT. We're seeing mobile health or e-health with telemedicine where you can now diagnose uh, remotely uh, through the use of ICT. We're seeing uh, e-commerce where people can now order things from the comfort of their home. And all this is uh, driven or stemming from that ICT enables you to do things faster, better, cheaper. And that's really what the end user in any business wants. Botswana's mobile internet uptake continues to grow at an alarming rate and with it is creating new investment opportunities for mobile operators, content providers, smartphone companies and application developers. Another area of ICT that holds significant transformative potential in Botswana is the application of mobile technology within the formal financial ecosystem. Specifically, mobile money has played a pivotal role in accelerating access to and usage of formal financial services among individuals within many communities across the country. ICT in Botswana is a booming industry with its own set of unique opportunities. And while it is true that most of the investment in this sector has been directed towards mobile and related applications, the country has also invested heavily in submarine cables and developing broadband access throughout the country. The Botswana health sector is the prime area for investment as the country is committed to providing quality health professionals and pharmaceuticals nationwide. Botswana spends a lot of money every year to provide free health care to its citizens. It imports both raw materials and pharmaceutical medicaments, thereby increasing the investment opportunities. Investors can profit from investments in both the overall sector and its industries. Uh, of late, there is also opportunity, I think, for more private players to come into the market from a hospital perspective because we do know that uh, the northern part of the country, uh, like in Francistown and the places like Maru, uh, the market is not really fully served there in terms of the private uh, hospitals. And we tend to see uh, our client base, we do have clients that come all the way from Maui or from Francistown for services in Habron because the services seems to be concentrated here in, the, in, in, in Habron as opposed to being spread around. So there is an opportunity, I think, for, for, for um, more investors to come in. Botswana is looking for pharmaceutical and biotech companies, companies willing to invest in research and development. The healthcare sector is vast and Botswana is looking at creating a world-class health sector which attracts patients and professionals from the region. Opportunities are plentiful in the Botswana healthcare sector with investment already exceeding $100 million. An educated and growing middle class will demand better quality health care. Meanwhile, increased life expectancy and lifestyle changes will place an increased focus on non-infectious diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular conditions. The value of the Botswana pharmaceutical market was worth 400 million US dollars in 2013 and is expected to reach approximately 800 million US dollars by 2020. The country is collectively focused on supporting local pharmaceutical manufacturing in Botswana, increasing access to affordable quality medicines and reducing the cost of medical imports. The government is also offering tax exemptions and reduced land prices to help bring manufacturing plants to Botswana, subsequently helping healthcare companies looking to enter or expand their operations throughout the country. Digital health has the potential to significantly reduce costs and inefficiencies, improve quality and to trigger people's interest in monitoring their own health. As the market develops, law and regulation will also reflect the growing medical sector to ensure suitable quality standards, a level but competitive playing field, and an appropriate framework that attracts investor interest but safeguards public interests. 
In Botswana, agriculture is becoming a major contributory sector to the development of the country, employing thousands of people. Although Botswana is not yet self-sufficient and most of the food imports are from South Africa, the government has put in place development programs aiming towards self-sufficiency. There's a lot of opportunities in Botswana. If you bring your side, the government will look after you. They look after their farmers. And they are growing at this stage now, as we are speaking. They are looking after the farmers because they want to grow agriculture. Food sustainability is of utmost importance to, to, uh, to, to, to Botswana, Ministry of Agriculture. Opportunities in agriculture range from dairy farming, crop farming, horticulture and beef production. Botswana's cattle population exceeds the population and cattle farming contributes to 80% of agricultural GDP. Botswana exports about 9,000 tons of beef to the EU and 10,000 tons to South Africa. It enjoys unlimited preferential market access to the EU, competing with countries such as Brazil. The country slaughters about 220,000 cattle annually for the domestic and export market. We have tended to focus on niche markets which require higher quality standards and uh, that has served us quite well. Um, we believe that uh, if we are to continue doing that, meeting the, uh, the requirements of the meat markets, I think we will grow. Um, the future is there. Botswana beef is one of the most uh, uh, accepted in Europe. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, the sky is the limit. The government of Botswana encourages investment in private feedlots and competition amongst feedlots to offer producers better market-related prices for cattle that meet EU requirements. Direct opportunities that exist in the beef sector include canning, leather and leather goods, growing demand for leather and leather goods in China, the USA and the EU has been reflected in the high compound annual growth rates and these countries present significant export opportunities for Botswana's leather goods. Production of horticultural products is one sector that investors can capitalize on. Horticultural production has been indicated as a sector that can provide real opportunities and can contribute considerably to GDP. Although the production of fruits and vegetables has increased over the past decade, Botswana is still heavily reliant on imports. The biggest challenge with crop farming and horticulture is access to water. But the government is encouraging investors to employ innovative solutions such as greenhouses and water management solutions to tackle this challenge. Be part of our phenomenal growth story. Economies cannot function without minerals and the products made from them. Mining, especially diamond mining, has been the backbone of Botswana's economic growth for the last 50 years transforming the country into one of the richest in Africa. Botswana's mining industry consists mainly of diamonds and mining currently accounts for about a third of the government revenue. Other minerals mined include nickel copper, coal, soda ash, gold, silver, semi-precious stones and granite. And Botswana also has untapped uranium lead and zinc reserves, which keen investors can exploit. We've got a lot of minerals, we've got base metals, uh, they like copper, nickel, we've got lots of coal, we've got lots of diamonds. Those are all opportunities that are available to the industry right now, to, to anybody that, that wants to invest. We've got iron ore as well, you know, for the future. If you go to, uh, to the western part of this country, in Ngamilan, for instance, Ngamilan is fancy. Uh, you see that uh, the guys there are very busy finding uh, copper, finding silver, uh, finding zinc. So uh, those are the uh, minerals that I think we are going to see investment taking place in the future. 
Opportunities for investment in the mining sector range from prospecting, surveying, expansion of existing mining projects to new mining projects, beneficiation of minerals and improved value chain benefits. Most of the opportunities in mining exist in the diamond sector and the relocation of the DTCI to Botswana also created opportunities in diamond trading, cutting and polishing, with ancillary support services such as banking, security, insurance, certification and brokerage. The country also has large untapped resources of coal and a strong demand from emerging powerhouses such as India and China will allow Botswana to export into the seaborne market over the long term. Botswana is home to the Makadikadi pans, which is rich in soda ash. This mineral has extensive application across a wide range of industries. It is used primarily in manufacturing of glass, detergents, paper, chemicals and several applications in metal refining. Our soda ash is extremely competitive in world markets because the majority of the world output of soda ash is made synthetically, which is usually a more expensive process. Access to investment opportunities in mining is made easier through the Government Passing of Mines and Mineral Act, which encourages investors to invest in the exploration of other mineral resources of Botswana. The country's energy sector is also rife with opportunities. There is a substantial potential in renewable energy sources like solar, which is the most abundant in the country. A large potential lies in the energy sector through the supply of related products, solar panels, energy generating equipment and applicators. Be part of our phenomenal growth story. Centrally located in SADC, Botswana offers land-linked access to seven fast-growing markets and serves as the perfect location to leverage trade growth. Botswana is very central. If you look on a map, you will see that we are surrounded by South Africa, Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Um, and that's actually a very good position to be in for us to sit in Botswana because we can transport from South Africa to Botswana, to Namibia. If you run to Namibia, Zimbabwe or Zambia, we have to run throughout Botswana. And to be based in Botswana, it works for us. It, it helps you in the cross-border industry quite a lot. And it's easy accessible, all these countries around you, because we are based very central. The backbone of Botswana's positioning as a regional hub for trade and logistics is an innovative multi-model infrastructure combining sophisticated telecommunications, energy, improved rail system and a network of express highways that allow for easy access into the region. Botswana provides an alternative route to one of SADC's busiest corridors, such as the route from South Africa through Zimbabwe and further north to Zambia and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Botswana has committed significant investment to develop new and revitalize existing transport corridors. The $140 million Kazangula Bridge project linking Botswana and Zambia opens opportunities and possibilities to accessing SADC further by road and rail. Being in Botswana benefits us because uh, I think when you look at where our country is located within the continent, we are central within the SADC area. So in terms of moving goods cross-border, we have many options. If we're looking at the location of Botswana in terms of its centrality, what's promising is this completion of the Kazangula Bridge. In terms of process now, in terms of time, I mean, it's going to be a one-stop border basically and I think you're going to have more movement and I think you're going to have more access to the northern part of Africa through that gateway. The logistics sector is a growing focus for property development in SADC on the back of rising demand for modern warehouse space from retailers and goods manufacturers. As the region undergoes a wave of modern commercial property development, the logistics sector is emerging as a focus for activity. 
Industries that will drive freight flow through the short to medium term are export bulk commodities, particularly coal, but also iron ore, copper and agricultural products. The government prioritization of other sectors will lead to development synergies between these sectors and the logistics industry. Be part of our phenomenal growth story. The Botswana education space is evolving and this has led to the emergence of new niche sectors like vocational training, finishing schools, child skill enhancement and e-learning among others. However, over the past few decades, the global economy has shifted from being manufacturing centric to a knowledge driven one. The pressure on schools to deliver a higher quality product is intensifying as the labor market demands better skilled workers and students and families enjoy greater transparency into schools' performance. Moreover, students are coming to education with greater needs. In Botswana, the education sector receives the largest share of total government expenditure. The government emphasizes the development of human resources by investing in education and training to raise productivity. Given that we needed to make sure that we have the requisite skills in the market to develop our economy, the government saw it fit um, to then pay uh, or sponsor the students. So a lot of the students that we get uh, from the market are sponsored by the government through DTEF. Um, and then we have some that are privately sponsored. We also have the private sector that is playing a good uh, role um, by sponsoring their employees uh, to come in to do postgraduate. I must also say that in the postgraduate space, we have those that are actually self-sponsoring. They actually work and then they pay from their salaries or whatever it is that they get, be it business and income or whatever dividends that they get to come and sponsor themselves uh, in the school. The role of the private sector in higher education has significantly increased in the last decade. This highlights the attractiveness of the higher education sector and the excellent opportunities it provides for Botswana's private and foreign investment within the existing framework. Almost every other major institution has its own uh, niche area of programs that we are running. Others uh, are into uh, technology and creative arts, others are into ICT. Uh, we are mainly uh, a, commercial, a commercially driven institution. Most of our programs are, are, are in commerce and entrepreneurship. For those who may be coming into, into the market, those who are new, they have to be careful. I think they need to select uh, uh, programs which are not necessarily offered by many other institutions as we speak. We have a unique investor value proposition to fully leverage and transform ourselves into an education destination of choice and a center of excellence in education. By attracting leading tertiary institutions, scholars, researchers and students into the country. Where we want to be, nowadays governments the world over we talk of knowledge economies. We want to play a big role in that space. And knowledge economy is based on people being educators. So we want to create that pool of highly qualified people who can play a major role in turning this country into a knowledge economy. The Botswana education sector is the sunrise sector as it presents an unparalleled opportunity in terms of market size, minimal impact of recession and future potential reform measures proposed by government. The Botswana automotive sector is largely import driven, but in recent years, Botswana has positioned herself as a supplier of vehicle parts and components to South Africa's automotive industry, resulting in strong increase of vehicle part exports from Botswana. Botswana acknowledges its limited market size, but the growing economies around her and the demand for automotive components within the region present multiple opportunities for investors. Among the key opportunities in the automotive sector are parts and component supply to South Africa, supply of replacement parts of vehicles of large-scale projects, 
such as mining and agricultural projects. Expansion of existing component manufacturing industries. One of Botswana's strongest value propositions is its location. It is in proximity to the larger automotive market and automotive manufacturer in Africa, South Africa. The country has a delivery time advantage over major competitors in Asia, Europe and North America. Be part of our phenomenal growth story. Invest in Botswana.